Hello. What's the weather tomorrow? Here's the forecast for tomorrow in Clarksville. Look for lots of clouds with a high of 43 degrees Fahrenheit and a low of 26 degrees. Hello. What should I be doing today? I've got lots of ideas. Let's find something to do. Would you like top skills, relaxation skills, funny games, or immersive games? Okay, you get the idea. Or at least I hope you know what I'm doing here. This is a Raspberry Pi functioning as an Amazon Alexa, Echo, or whatever you like to call it. This is a fun project that you can complete in one hour. This can be a cool capability that you can add to your Raspberry Pi, especially if you have one that is always on, as it is the case for me. One of my Pies is my main workhorse. It is running as a Plex Media server, a video surveillance server, and a smart home assistant. That thing has been on for over six months with no interruptions. Anyway, let me show you what you need to get going. Well, of course you will need a Raspberry Pi 4. 4 GB or better is always my preference. You can use Raspberry Pi OS, Ubuntu, or Twister OS. As you can see, I am using Twister OS for this, but I tried Raspberry Pi OS and it works as good. If installing an operating system is new to you, I have plenty of simple and quick tutorials in this channel and I will put links in the video description. If you have questions or need to be pointed in the right direction, don't hesitate to comment or contact me directly. Okay, let's get to work. As I mentioned, what you are looking at is Twister OS and the first thing we need to do is a quick update and upgrade. So let's go to terminal and enter sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. For the sake of simplicity, I typed all the commands in this text document and I am making the same file available to you in the video description. You can simply follow along, copy and paste. So right here we need to copy this link to Alexa voice service and paste it in the web browser. Sign in. If you do not have an account, go ahead and create one. Once you log in, go to console. Manage your products. As you can see, I already have one AVS product, but for the purpose of this video, I am going to create a new product. I am going to click on Add New Product. I am going to choose a product name. It is whatever you want to call it. Choose a product ID. Check device with Alexa built-in. Answer no for companion app option. Select a product category. I am choosing computing. Hands-free and far-field, you can choose one or both. Answer no, no, no. I don't have any business plans for this and I do not want any children playing with my toys. Oh, I forgot to write in a product description. So let's do that now. Hit next. Since I already have a security profile set up, you can see that it is prompting me to select it. But I'm not going to do that. I want to show you how to set one up. So I'm going to click on create new profile. I'm going to enter a security profile name, put whatever you want to name it, and enter a security profile description so you can track what it is for. Click next. Oops, what was I thinking? This should not have any spaces. Now click next and we are almost done. Scroll all the way to the bottom and click on finish. You should see this message. Now let's go back and find the profile that we just created. Click on it. Look to the left and select security profile and scroll to the bottom. Select other devices and platforms. Enter a client ID. Again, this can be whatever you want to name it and click generate ID. Once the ID is generated, you will see a download button. You need to click on that to download a JSON file. Make sure you know where it's downloading to. 
most likely it will be in your downloads folder. We are now done with this part. You can minimize the web browser and launch terminal. Copy all these three links and paste them into terminal. This will download the SDK configuration scripts that we need. Once done, go ahead and install this script too. You should not need to do this if you are using the most updated version of Twister OS, but this was missing when I was testing this on both Raspberry Pi OS and Ubuntu. I recommend to run this command anyway, just so you don't have to find out that you need to do this 30 minutes later. Very important, we need to move the JSON file that we downloaded earlier to the Pi directory. As you can see, mine went to downloads, so I am going to copy it and paste it in the Pi directory. Now let's reboot. As soon as the system comes back on, I am going to log back into Alexa voice service and minimize the browser. Get terminal up again. We need to go into the Pi directory where all the goodies are, copy this command and drop it in terminal. Make sure you type in agree and hit enter. Now grab a beverage of your choice and chill. This will take a while. When you get to license and copyright, keep hitting enter over and over until you get to the bottom where you will be asked to answer yes or no and of course you want to answer yes. This also will take a little while. Once everything is done, look for where it says 100% built target sample app and complete configuration build at the end. Next, we need to go back into the Pi directory and launch sudo bash start sample.sh. As you can see, it is checking for authorization. So we are going to need an authorization key. Before we start looking for an authorization, we need to make sure that we are logged in into the activation page and everything is ready. So let's copy this to a web browser. Now we need to locate the authorization key. The key can be found right here. Simply scroll up to the top and look for something like this. Now that we have the key, we can simply copy it and drop it in the activation page. Click continue and allow. And that should be it. All we have to do next is go back to terminal and enter this command sudo bash start sample dot sh and now you raspberry pi can kiss the bride. Let's give this a try. Alexa, what time is it? I'm at 7.01 p.m. Alexa, tell me a joke. Why do zombies make such excellent golfers? They really know their way around a corpse. <laughs> okay, one last thing. If you need a quicker way to launch it, you can simply right click anywhere on the desktop, create launcher, enter the name, the command, you can find the command in the cheat sheet, check both options and click create. Once the launcher is created, go back and right click on it, go to properties, permissions and check allow this file to run as a program. This is it. Now let's give it a try. Looks like it's doing the job. I think this is it for today. If you find this content fun and interesting, make sure you like and subscribe for more. As always, thank you for watching. Catch you in the next video.